they hate us because they ain't us. Now they're trying to create this conspiracy about Elon and Trump. Bloomberg, what do you got to say about it? Let's tap into the video. It's electric. Everyone hates Tesla. Donald Trump heading back to the White House. This will usher in an unprecedented era in American history. In a dramatic political comeback, Donald Trump will return to the White House. And if he's going to share the credit for his victory with anyone, it's this guy. Where is he? Come on up here, Elon. Come here. Elon Musk, known for selling cars, making rockets, became one of the biggest. Known for selling cars, making rockets, selling software and online companies, and then also curing blindness and allowing people to walk again who were paralyzed. Yeah, that guy. Political donors in American history. Even with the Supreme Court's Citizens United ruling allowing corporations to spend unlimited amounts on campaigns, the nearly... Oh yeah, also too, paying the largest tax bill in all human history. Yeah, that guy, Elon Musk. $200 million that Musk spent, along with his intense campaigning both on X and on the ground, dwarfs precedent. A star is born, Elon. And he's already reaping the rewards. Immediately after Trump's victory, Tesla shares went through the roof. In a single day after the election, his net worth goes up, you know, by, by like 26 billion. And that's speculation. It's a lot of speculation on the market. It really has nothing to do with Tesla underlining business, but a lot of people are speculating. More favorable administration, more favorable progress for a Tesla. That's an assumption that people make in the market. It didn't translate to like Trump giving them billions of dollars. It's just the beginning. Trump is in a position to make him even richer. Musk is like the de facto vice president, and he is going to have a role kind of reshaping the contours of the federal government going forward. There's a word for guys like this. Elon Musk is an oligarch. Wait, first of all, he's the de facto, really? But one second, President Trump is so narcissistic and conceited that he will never concede power to anybody. But all of a sudden, now he would do it for Elon Musk. Okay. And by that, I mean in the sense that he is a very wealthy business person who has used and seems to be interested in continuing to use his political connections to make money. He uses his actual ability to create science and engineering and technology, and he finds himself invested in politics or around political people because those same politicians want, I don't know, maybe factories, um, maybe energy storage capabilities and technologies for their nation. Maybe they want foreign direct investment into their country. Uh, maybe they want access to Starlink. And so again, he finds himself around political leaders because his companies create massive amounts of value. And that value is something that a lot of world leaders will want to translate into their countries and their nations so that their people could progress from Tesla and everything related to Elon. Imagine Taylor Swift, Warren Buffett, Rupert Murdoch are all rolled into one. That's Elon Musk. So what does Elon Musk... Bad example, bro. Elon Musk is John D. Rockefeller, Henry Ford, W. Bowen, and J.P. Morgan all rolled into one. That's a better example, not Taylor Swift. Get real. Want from this newfound power. Musk wants a lot of things from Donald Trump. Good thing a commercial stopped him. They were speaking mad nonsense. Guess we got to go back. Elon Musk's journey to Kingmaker began intentionally or not with his acquisition of Twitter in 2022. Elon Musk paid $44 billion to buy Twitter and conventional wisdom is Elon Musk destroyed Twitter. And from a business standpoint, that is true. If you look at what investors have said is about 80% less than it was when Elon Musk bought it. But I don't think Elon Musk looks at this as a business decision. He looks at it as a cultural and a political play. Now he could say that, but there's no evidence to prove that. But I do have evidence to prove that the business actually operates more effective and efficient. And it's not that it actually was worth, it was overvalued at 44 billion, period. So he purchased a product or an asset that was overvalued, okay? And then when he got into the business, he was actually able to break even. Previously, the business did not break even. So basic business economics or basic economics says that the business is more effective and efficient than it was when it was valued higher, but it actually made no money. If anything, it lost money. So 101 of just even just accounting states that the business is in better condition than it was previously, regardless of the valuation. 
as influence, as a way to change the culture from what he sees as, you know, too left wing, too woke, however you want to put it. It is now basically the center from which a lot of right wing culture and political advocacy is originating. Also, another funny thing is that, you know, previously or just excuse me, recently, they showed that it's about a half. It's about a 47 and 48 split between Democrat or Republican or left or right people on X. So actually, previously, it was around 70 in favor of left and Democrats versus now it's about 48, 47. So it's way more reasonable now and actually equally split than it was before. So it's not nothing crazy. It's not like the right took over. But I guess if you were majority of the people in the party and then a bunch of red people show up, you're like, wait, hold on. Y'all taking up all the space. And it's like, no, it's 50-50 now. Before, you had us beat 7 to, seven to 10. One of Musk's very first actions at Twitter, before even rebranding it as X, was to reinstate Donald Trump's account, which had been suspended in 2021 following the January 6th insurrection. His return to Twitter was marked by this notorious post. He saved free speech. Even though Trump's own platform, Truth Social, is in competition with Twitter, Musk's reach exposed Trump to a whole new audience. Musk kind of opened the door for a lot of people who maybe would never have looked at Trump or considered voting for Trump to take a look at him. Like the young men who follow Elon and think that Elon is great, you know, now see Trump in a different light. And he has given Trump like a gravitas that maybe he didn't have before. And the same thing happens with Oprah, Beyonce, Megan Thee Stallion. If anybody uses celebrities more than anybody, it would be Democrats, right? I mean, the best that the right had was Hulk Hogan, <laughs> Kid Rock. Like how relevant are they? But God dang, you know, the left, y'all had Kim Kardashian, Usher, Eminem, y'all had everybody. So again, and y'all paid them all money to legitimately come up there and, and do endorsements. Not because they just felt like that, but they got paid. Now they could still feel like that, but they got paid to do it. Camila Harris still owed people money. You know, it's one thing to have Hulk Hogan speaking at Madison Square Garden for you. It's another to have arguably like the most successful capitalist in a generation speak. The future is going to be amazing. This is like a mutually beneficial business arrangement, right? Trump got money and got elected. Musk gets sway over the federal government. This mutually beneficial arrangement includes a new role for Musk that raises a whole host of potential conflicts. At the Madison Square Garden rally, Howard Lutnick introduced Musk as the co-chair of the Department of Government Efficiencies. We set up Doge. Yes. I think the funniest name is, is DOG, the, the Doge, Department of Government Efficiency. Musk wants the federal government. Now, of course, they're going to pre create a you know Department of Government Efficiency. Now, this was marketed to the people who voted for Trump prior to him actually being elected. So net, net, this is something that people consented on and people were all for. And, are, you know, people were at town halls asking Elon Musk, like, hey, what's your plans or what are your strategies? What are the methods you're going to utilize? And so people were extremely excited. And this is what the people voted for. And the people, at least, who voted for Trump, the ones who didn't, obviously, are the ones that are in this documentary in this report. And they lost. And this is what sore losers do. But it's completely fine. We have a free country. And if you want to sulk on losing, then it's completely fine. I completely understand it. I would probably say the same thing if I felt like my team lost or whatever. But I'm not on a team. I'm just whatever. And perhaps the most alarming conflict of Musk's cost-cutting role is his potential ability to halt unfavorable investigations into his business dealings. Right now, there are between a half dozen and a dozen different investigations into Elon Musk's companies. I can't comment. You know, there's legal stuff. But I'm curious, what do you guys think? And there's always legal battles. If you run a company, you have legal battles. The guy, you know, that operates a deli around the corner has legal battles. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing necessarily, right? Every specific detail and every specific case is its own. And so you have to dive into that. But this is what people have done with the justice system. It's like an allegation in itself means you're guilty. And that's not how it goes. That's not justice. That's just, you know, lynch mobs. It's not like he can just order those investigations closed, but if he is in a position to control the federal budget, what better way to deal with an investigation than to just defund the agency that is supposed to be doing that investigation? And you have proof of him doing this how? Right? Like, I have probably more, just as much proof that you would do that versus Elon. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I have no evidence that you would do it. And you have no evidence that Elon would do it. Again, that's an allegation. It's easy to make allegations, but 
it's harder to prove what you're saying. And it's not even true, my guy. <laughs> There's one thing we learned from the last Trump presidency, which is that it doesn't really matter what your job is in the Trump White House. What matters is who is talking to Trump on a regular basis. And right now, that is Elon Musk. Musk and Trump are and you guys are still alive and the oligarch did not rule over the country when Trump was already in. But here you go. I guess it's going to happen this time because this time is different. Okay. They're very similar men and that they both love to be the main character. They don't like to share the limelight. And it's hard to imagine that these two giant personalities will be able to stay in the same room and stay aligned for a really long time without running into problems. But Elon and Trump need... So there you go, right? You said that they're both conceited and they're both narcissistic and they both can't stay in the room together for much long without button heads. Okay, if that's the truth, then you got nothing to worry about. Each other. And that is what's different. And that is what... Eh, end of story. I'm tired of listening to losers. Like, you know, it's funny. When people lose, they just get kind of salty in different ways. Like, oh, it's pretty sad. But I get it. I get it. I get it. It's just human nature, okay? And shout outs to somebody. Somebody made a comment about that video. I mean, let's let's check out the comments. This guy right here, Obstacles to Opportunity, says, Elon Musk and Trump, amazing future. Okay, so that, that was a great post. I don't know who that guy is, but that guy knows what he's talking about. Let's bring this up on the big screen. Bloomberg talking about rich people using money on politics, the irony. Yeah, that's pretty funny, right? Bloomberg, right? The people who actually utilize money for many campaigns. But okay, if Elon is an oligarch, then what would make Mike Bloomberg then exactly coming from that company and people who work at the company? That's super funny, right? Like, come on, my guys, you're doing the same thing. And in band just like that, Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg, own media slaps the oligarch tag on Elon Musk. Oh, the irony are almost too rich to handle. And then hate on Elon is amazing. Bloomberg donated a lot of money. Why aren't they making a story about that? And this is blatant propaganda. Bloomberg in meltdown mode. The only difference between Bloomberg and Musk is that one of them is a sore loser. I guess that's Bloomberg, right? And it must acting like a kangaroo. Is that how money makes you react? Yes, it is. I'm just telling you that from personal experience. And Bloomberg whining about Michael Bloomberg himself donating big to dim election campaigns. LOL. And then y'all loved him when he was a Democrat, but not now. That is true. They loved that man when he was a Democrat. And so Camilla Hells, Camilla's one billion was a small donation. This is hilarious. Yeah. Elon Musk, 500 million and Camilla Harris, one billion. Hmm. It doesn't get any more corrupt than this. And what about Bill Gates? 50 million donation. And that probably went to the Dems. And remember, 83 billionaires support one side of the party and it's not the Republicans. So majority of billionaires support actually the Democrats, but they're talking about the one guy like Elon Musk that supports the Republicans and not even Republicans, Democrats or Republicans. Elon Musk just supported Donald Trump specifically. So I just kind of wanted to show you that hate so you guys can actually see it for yourself. And realize how true it is. And guys, remember, I'm a combat veteran and I'm pretty neutral in the whole thing. Trump, Harris, it didn't matter to me at the end of the day. We're all Americans. Uh, we can agree to disagree and people vote for who they want to vote for. But shout outs to the MAGA and making America great again. We're going to do it rocket by rocket and electric battery by electric battery. Everyone hates Tesla, but there's nothing new. Elon Musk for the win, and then also America for the win. I see you guys in the next episode. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get this information and the latest and the greatest evolving Elon Musk and Tesla. See you guys on the next one.